Chris Turner's remarkable display is still very much the talking point at Roker Park. And his record at home shows just four goals conceded with six clean sheets. Because of injury, there are two changes in the lineup in front of him. Peter Daniel replaces Nick Pickering at fullback. And Stan Cummins starts a game for the first time since his return home from Crystal Palace. He's in place of Mark Proctor. Sean Elliott is still suspended. Gary Bailey knows well how records can be broken. The five goals he conceded at Goodison Park matched his total against for United in their opening ten games of the season. But since that double defeat by Everton in League and Milk Cup, United have had four straight victories and three of them in the league. Injuries, though, today keep out Alberston and Moran, so Duxbury moves to left-back, and 19-year-old Billy Garton is in the centre of the defence. Brian Robson returns home to his native northeast, and that makes it quite a week for Steve Berry. On Wednesday, Glenn Hoddle of Tottenham was met. Now it's the captain of England. Not bad for a player given a free transfer by Portsmouth. So Sunderland kick off what amounts to a second cup tie here at Roker Park. United looking, I must say, rather strange in an all-blue strip. And that's the acting skipper, Venison, who gets in the first clearance for Sunderland. Gary Bailey's hair being ruffled by the wind. It's a bit of a swirler, but it seems to be slightly stronger blowing from left to right, if that's not a contradiction. And the referee, John Kay of... John Key, rather, of Rotherham, has made his presence felt right at the start. He obviously felt that was some time-wasting. I can't think what else he gave it for, because it seemed to me that Gary Bailey was static. It certainly confused the England captain. Whether it was a matter of feet as far as Bailey was concerned or whether simply because he stood still, I'm not sure. But Mr Key ran some 40 yards to give the verdict. And Venison shot curls into the crowd up over the crossbar. Now, to put it mildly, provided an interesting start. Bailey, not surprisingly, opting to kick it clear. And the ball not held up very much by the wind. But there was a bit of a push by Bennett. United uh, have Hughes and Whiteside again as their front two. Gordon McQueen to take it. Moses with the touch. Robson, yes, but Olsen losing Venison and off the underside of the crossbar from Whiteside. What an amazing start to this match. It's a lovely ball by Robson. Jesper Olsen was completely in the clear, and Norman Whiteside steamed in, and the ball came back off the underside of the crossbar. Gidman improvised well. So did Hughes, and he was fouled. Jesper Olsen has popped up on the left. But, uh, Strachan denied taking the kick quickly because he was too far forward. McQueen is up on this attack. That's well held up. Moses, massive players. Robson trying to sort it out. Oh, and he's made it! Totally full Chris Turner and how a goalkeeper's life can change in the space of three days. Brian Robson scoring in the 13th minute. I think the goalkeeper was conscious that he might be able to turn the ball out to the left of the United attack. Instead, he went for the shot, and the ball crept in by Turner's left-hand post. The goal in 13 minutes... And it's Robson's sixth of the season. And here he is battling for the ball in defence. Beaten by Hodgson. Stan Cummins. It's blocked by Gordon McQueen. Good play by Walker. And by Billy Garton. Well, the question is how quickly can Chris Turner put that moment out of his mind. 
cleanly struck by Daniel. Right side. Got Hughes left. Two the other way, Strachan and Olsen. And up comes Moses and Robson. Olsen. Strachan. Goal kick. Couldn't be cunningly played by Bennett. is Hughes and that's two and what a clinical piece of finishing by Mark Hughes Sunderland two down United two up in 15 minutes and you don't have to be told who they support really fine goal finish was classic by Hughes buried it in the corner for goal number 11 it was a very very tight decision they looked for the linesman on this side he kept his flag down and Hughes took full advantage Sunderland in every sense, start again. And here's an opportunity for Walker, yes! Well, it may be a windy afternoon, but it's raining goals, that's for sure. Walker's goal in the 17th minute. And just to keep the metaphor about the weather, the sun has come out suddenly again. After a pretty dull opening here at Roker Park, as far as the home side were concerned, up go the Sunderland flags, and we have a real match on our hands here. Olsen. Robson. Hughes. The kick has been given. And just a little sweat between uh, Hodgson and Hughes. But he's, I think, sending them both off. Yes, he is indeed. He's sending them both off. Hodgson and Hughes have been sent off for raising fists at each other. Well, that makes it six sendings off on this ground this season. One from either side. Linesman is flagging on the far side. Hodgson has already gone away. Ron Atkinson talking there with Hughes. And I can only assume that something has been said from the bench. Frank Burrow is the number two at Sunderland. And Ron Atkinson both making comments to the referee. The players definitely raised fists at each other. I would doubt if anything that could possibly be called a punch was landed, but both went off. And here's Stan Cummins as we return to football. Len Ashurst, the Sunderland manager, also down by the dugout. I have to say that in the match, of this sort of tension, Mr. Key has not helped himself by his extraordinary decision at the opening when he didn't apply the most important law of refereeing, which is to use common sense. Very. Whiteside and Bennett. Whiteside, free kick for the challenge by Chisholm. and to pull everybody back. Robson plays it through to Duxbury. The linesman's flag is up, so it doesn't count. West. It. 
Gale. Olsen to him. A little bit of laughter between Gale and Olsen. And here's Bennett. And what would the referee give for that? Was there intent on the part of Gary Bailey as Garten made the mistake he came across? Well, it looks as though he's pointing to the spot. Yes, indeed he is. A penalty has been given. Penalty against Gary Bailey, who flung himself through the air and caught Bennett. But whether with intent or not, well, the referee decided that it was with intent. And Walker with a chance of his second goal of the afternoon. And it's two all in spite of a very, very brave attempt by Gary Bailey, who got his hands to the ball, but the pace of it beat him. Wasn't able to divert it round the post, only into the corner of the goal. So, two all. 42 minutes gone. And if the two managers can sort a few things out during the half-time interval, we might be able to start again. A play by McQueen. Strachan. Daniel, West, Stan Cummins, that will be another one, Cummins brought down by McQueen, in the closing seconds of the half, although time for one kick at least will not be of importance, because the kick has to be taken, even if we go over 90 minutes, look at the expression on Atkinson's face, it's gone through a whole range of emotions, as indeed has everybody here in Roker Park during this first 45 minutes. And here's a man on a hat-trick. Clive Walker from the penalty spot for the second time. Same place. This time wide of Gary Bailey's dive. And Sunderland lead 3-2. And feelings around the ground of, I think it's the right word, delirium. to reduce both teams down to 10 men. And the ball, the ball arrives in the penalty area. The half-time whistle goes. And Clive Walker comes off with a hat-trick, two of them from the penalty spot. And by the half-time interval, Sunderland have a 3-2 lead. An extraordinary first half. So, as they say, here we go again. United now a goal down, attacking the goal to our right. Chris Turner's disappointment at the first goal, which beat him, seems an awful long time ago. Green, used his shoulder. Walker, inside his west. Gidman did well with Jockey Walker away. And option back to help out. Daniel. 
whistle has gone, and the referee has gone to speak to the linesman. And I suspect that will mean a booking for Norman Whiteside. And when will this youngster learn? There's great talent. He seems to find it very difficult not to pass the odd observation, to put it mildly. Come back for a throw. Walker. West, good save. Really good start by Gary Bailey. Colin West denied again. He's only scored twice this season on both occasions in the penalty spot. And that was certainly a fine save by Gary Bailey. United want to make a substitution. Dutchman will replace the Dane. And with Muir and the player to come on to replace Jesper Olsen. Bench which has contained David Hodgson there with his hand to his face for most of the time since his dismissal. He didn't spend too much time in the dressing room. Adam Cummins. Walker. Make it clean away. From Gidman, well claimed. Curling cross from Walker, just curling away from the goalkeeper who stretched well to hold it equally well. Robson, Duxbury, Strachan. And this is to be an afternoon which United will look back and talk about the might have been. When the championship is all over. How can they yet save themselves? Here's Moses and he's onside. And there was a foot in which made all the difference and the foot belonged to Daniel. Moses really quite distraught because that was a clear opportunity for three all. More credit to Daniel who moved very quickly indeed. Only a corner results. Which Buren will take. McQueen is up. Garton tried to be up at the back. Well, incidentally, uh, 25,405, which is a couple of thousand down on the uh, figure here in midweek for the World Cup tie with Spurs. Berry. Cummins. push men forward, they're more concerned at holding what they have, but here is West, one man to come inside really Muren and now playing the time that Mr. Key has on his watch for the stoppages Robson who started United on their way desperately to the end to get them back to what seemed to be theirs at the beginning all look very comfortable at 2-0 Free kick given against Strachan. Another shake of the head, and there have been many of those. The referee's had a signal from the linesman on the near side. And now from the one on the far. He's got his arm across his chest, indicating that time is up in his view. But the referee is the final arbiter, and it's he who decides all things. And what he decided this afternoon will be debated for a long time. Sunderland have the victory, all three goals by Clive Walker. And the man who has made the headlines here is not on the score sheet, he was there to control the game.